Let me get, go straight into it, okay? Is that okay? Just go straight into the Word of God. Amen, this morning. Oh, I see so many familiar faces. I feel home already. Yeah, so good. Thank you, worship team. You all did better than yesterday. Awesome. It's really awesome. Yeah. I'm already blessed, uh, blessed by this church, blessed by your two wonderful pastors, Pastor Sam and, and uh, Pastor Andrew, their friendship. Uh, they are welcome, and I'm blessed by your worship team. You know, from the worship team, I also could tell the, the rest of the church because they are such wonderful people. Yeah? Amen. Why don't you give the uh, worship team a big hand because they, they have been really, really working hard, all right? Jeremy, don't go too far, okay? I may need you, all right? And, um, you know, this, this morning, um, as we close off this year, uh, we want to launch into the next year. And I, I used to have the habit of asking the Lord, Lord, what, what do you want to do next year? Will you give me a uh, direction? Will you give me a, a clear word? Now, Pastor Sam, have a prophetic word for the church for next year. That's great. That's important because corporately, you need to hear from the Lord. Yeah? But, um, but I used to do that for my personal life too. And I asked God as I close off this year, thank you for it. Uh, but Lord, what do you want to do? What was the word for next year? And... Uh, some time ago, I begin to change that. I say, God, don't. Uh, I, I always ask God for His plans, but recent years I stopped doing that because God began to speak to me and say, Son, don't ask of me, but ask for me. Don't ask of me what to do, prophetic word, what you're going to say, blah, 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 plans, you know. Ask for me. And asking for me means. I straight away understood in my heart that God is inviting me to get into His presence, to find His presence. How many of you know that when we have His presence, we have everything else? Yeah? And so I stopped asking God for His plans because I know if I have His presence, I have His plans. I stopped asking God for purpose for my life, for the new year, because I know when I find Him, I find myself. And so I, I quit. Uh, and I started uh, even to end off, close off 2019 with seeking His presence. Do you know His presence is so important? You as a church, RCA, you are in a great place. How many of you know church startup is hard work? Pastor Step, shoot. Yeah. Yeah, hard work. The first thing when I met her, she said, wow, starting church is very difficult. <laughs> that was the first words, you know. And I know. But I want you to know that startup is hard work. Staying on course is even harder. You are still running on momentum. You're still as a church running on adrenaline. But if you do not have the presence to empower you, you will not be able to sustain. You cannot stay on course without His presence. Church, we were never meant and never been created to be without His presence. We are never meant to live apart from His presence. We are called to be abiding with Him. And from that overflow of Christ in and through us, His kingdom is established. Amen? So we have to reorder and reorientate our thinking altogether. We are not here trying to cope with church life and spiritual life. We are here to master the human life because we understand that we are a spirit being connected to His Spirit. Amen? And so this morning, I feel God is also challenging us to launch into 2020 with His presence. Because there's so many things that we can talk about. Wow, prophetic word, you know, uh, strategy, plans. But I tell you, put those things aside. Get into His presence. Because from there, everything else flows. And so this morning, as we look at the first slide. Remember the first slide is the intro? What's the first slide? Ah, second slide. I want to talk about the presence and I, I, I want to encourage you as a church and as individuals. Okay, so this is not just a word for RCA, but it's a word for every single person that attends this church, attends this house, okay? And I want you to know that your home and your heart, 
your family, your marriage, your life, your career can experience the invasion and the visitation of His presence that will lock you into His agenda and purpose and power for the new year. Or you can set your own plans and set your own resolutions and say, God, here are my plans for 2020. Lord, come and bless it. He doesn't do that. Psalms 127 says that unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. That means we, if we really want to truly be blessed with success, we have to get on board with what He is building. Not present to Him what we want and ask Him to bless it. So we need to get into His presence. Amen? Okay, smile. Thank you. Very good. All right. Don't stress me, okay? All right, look at this. Uh, Second Chronicles. As soon as Solomon finished his prayer, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord. Everybody say loudly, the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord filled the temple and the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because of the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. Next slide. And when the people of Israel saw the fire come down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed down with their faces to the ground uh, on the pavement and worship and gave thanks to the Lord saying, for He is good and His steadfast love endures forever. The glory of the Lord. What's the glory of the Lord? You know, we, we, we have the presence of God. God promised that He's always with us, yes? He's always with us. He's always in our hearts. When we worship, He's always there. But there is a measure of His presence that we would call it the glory. The weightiness, the manifest presence. It's not just a presence that comes to refresh us, touch us and make us feel uh, goosebumps and feel good, even heal us. No, there is a measure of His presence called the glory where God's fullness and His essence and the substance of God enters into a place, a room, your heart, your life, where He, the fullness of God enters and he begins to manifest himself greatly. That means he becomes tangible. He becomes evident. He becomes not just an abstract feeling. He becomes so real. How many of you want that glory? Okay. Only five people. Backsliders here. <laughs> no, 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 just joking. Yeah, we want that glory. We want that invasion. We don't just want a, you know, just a nice little, little uh, refreshing touch. Each Sunday, it's like a little injection, a Panadol. You know, now doctors love to give Panadols. What's wrong with you? Panadol give you. No headache, Panadol. Fever, Panadol. Everything is Panadol. No doctors here, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah but, but you know, we do not want that kind of a presence. That level is good, but as we mature, as we grow in Christ, we want the fullness of Christ, the fullness of His presence, the glory of God to invade wherever we are. Will somebody say amen? And what happened here when the glory came to the temple? Solomon, Solomon prayed and the fire manifest presence came. The glory filled the temple and there was great divine interruption. There was an interruption. Jeremy couldn't sing anymore. He couldn't play the piano properly anymore. The host pastor couldn't speak anymore. The service order was thrown away. Everything was changed. Interruption. When the glory, when His presence comes, there will be interruption. Just like all great revivals in the past. You cannot control a revival. The moment man tries to control and put boundaries to a revival, it stops. So that is what happens. When the glory came, there was great interruption and things of the human realm was disrupted. How many of you want that? 
It's exciting, I tell you. It's exciting when God's presence comes in to a room and ransack and changes everything. That's why Isaiah, when he saw the Lord high and lifted up after the year of Uzziah, the, his, his great leader and king was removed, the human king was removed. When he saw God in His glory, he said, I am ruined. You see, when we see His glory, something of the human becomes so disrupted that we are literally left ruined for the average. We will be so ruined for the average. That means this human life don't make sense anymore. We begin to pursue something that is above. When I was a young Christian, some of you know, when I was a very young Christian, uh, I accepted the Lord casually because I was stressed, because my disciplined master shared the gospel with me. So I didn't have a choice, right? You know, oh, okay, sir, sure. Whatever you say, I don't want to go to detention. Not, I, did, I was not afraid of going to hell. I was afraid of going to detention. So sure, sir, I, I, I received Jesus. And after two years, nothing happened. You know, and I went to Trinity, okay, Trinity, wow, youth Bible class. I said, okay, finally, I just, I sit down in the youth Bible class, two other people, and then there was this teacher. Okay, what is doctrine? I said, what in the world is doctrine? That's it, two years backslided. <laughs> if you are teaching, please teach properly, okay? All right. <laughs> and so you know what happened? <clears throat> but after two years, uh, there was something, I was coming home from school. I was just secondary three, four and I, I was coming home from school, and something inside was a deep yearning. It's like a burning thing. And I went home, still in my school uniform. I closed my room door, locked it, closed my windows, closed the curtain, and it was pitch dark. And I sat there, still in my uniform, my school bag at the side, and I said, Jesus, if you're real, I hear so much and I've seen different things, but... If you're real, I want to know you. I want to experience you. Kid you not. Okay? You look at me, I'm very normal. Correct? Right? I'm very normal. All right? Okay? Yeah. Don't I? I don't, don't I look normal? <laughs> okay. I'm normal. Okay? And so I'm not doing wong wong time. You know, okay? All right? And so, so I was very normal. So I just sat there and said, Jesus, if you're real, will you just show me? Show me something. I kid you not. The peach dark room begin to glow with a light. It got brighter and brighter. And there was an emotion and experience that I've never felt before. There was a joy, but yet there was a deep sadness for, over the state of myself and sin. You know, at the same time, I cannot fully explain it. I'm sure you have experienced the presence of God before. And what happened... I, I, I had that, you know, and the room began to glow. And after that, I said, oh my goodness, this is, this is spooky, you know, like X-Files. I said, cannot be correct, like, cannot be true. So, so I said, okay, the next day, I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. So I came home, excited this time. Came home, locked the door, closed the window, closed the curtains, peached out. I sat there. And this same glow, this same light came. And I began to understand something. I'm not going crazy, <laughs> number one. But God is real. God is real. He is not found by casual seekers. He's found by people who's hungry. Are you hungry this morning? Hmm? Yeah. Do you know I was just a secondary school boy? No special thing. No great family legacy. No heritage. God came to an ordinary sack three, sack four boy. He can do that for you. He's not found by casual seekers. But that two weeks, two weeks every day, same time, same thing happened. The room began to glow with its glory. And I tell you, I went back to school. Okay, the time I was a swimmer. Okay, and my lifeguards, the lifeguards in the pool came to me. I said, boy, you sick ah? I said, no. Why are you so quiet? Why are you so different? Do you know, I realized from the testimony of others, they saw a change. Do you know when the glory comes, He transforms. He changes us. He ruins us 
for the average. We are then brought to a place of the things of above. And since then, I, I don't look at this human life to be so... Wow! There's something above that's even more wilder. Pardon my English. Everybody say wow. Can you say wow backwards? Wow. wow. Okay, all right, very good. <laughs> and the glory filled the temple. God longs to fill this place. Will somebody say amen? amen. God longs to fill His people. His, His glory is not going to be found in Lavender Care Point. His glory wants to be in your home. He wants to be in your 2020 every day. He wants to be in your life. He wants to be in your workplace. He wants to be in your school. He wants to be in your marriage. He wants to be in your relationships. He wants to be involved. And not just involved, He wants to be enthroned over all. Will somebody say amen? But the question is, are we ready for divine interruptions? Are we ready when He comes, there will be great disruptions that will happen? This is a good disruption. Okay? When the fullness of God comes, everything changes. Literally, I love the presence of God so much. That's why after that, because of that two weeks of encountering Jesus in a very powerful and personal way, I never want to do ministry the same. I never look at ministry and look at life the, the way a lot of people do. Because I know there's something above that even though I may not see with my natural eyes, but in my heart, I have tasted and know that God is so real and I need to pursue that. 2020 can be that kind of a year for you. How many of you want that? Let me see your hands. Amen. Haggai, next slide. Haggai says that this is what the Lord Almighty says, that in a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. This has not yet been fulfilled, because it's mentioned in Hebrews 12, 26. It is about Jesus coming. It's about Jesus that once, once more, God says, oh, you, you think the exodus is great? You think the pillar of fire, the splitting, uh, the parting of the Red Sea, the pillar of fire and cloud is great? Are you, yes, yes, yes. The, the people of Israel saw my glory in the wilderness. After Egypt, they saw my glory. In Egypt, they saw my glory against each, uh, Pharaoh and all of Egyptian. But there is going to come a time where I am going to shake the heavens and the earth once more. And I'm going to release my glory. And this glory, His name is the desire of all nations. In, in Hebrew, the, this word desire is also treasure. Guopao. That means everyone who have this glory is like there is a guopao in your life. This is so precious. This is like a treasure. Jesus is the treasure. The problem is there's a lot of places that have substituted presence with an atmosphere. Stroke lights, smoke machine, LED screen. All these are technology. No issue. If they are a master over the, what we do, then they are a master. But they must be a servant. But there are a lot of places that have so much atmosphere but no presence. So much good music but Jesus is not present. But once more, God says, I am going to release my glory. Let's look at the New Testament right now, okay? Next slide. Oh, okay. The RGB tells me we should go to the slide. Okay, let's obey, all right? <laughs> no, no, my fault. I didn't even rule. Solomon's temple. Pray. Oh, fire, glory, disruption. Good disruption. Everybody say, there's good disruption. That's what we want. We want God to interrupt our lives and order things, right? But there was a bad disruption. Remember David? The, 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 the Ark of the Covenant was captured by the Philistines. And David longed for the presence to be with him in Jerusalem. 
And when he was so jealous because the, the ark was left in Obed-Edom and uh, the, this guy, Obed-Edom's house, and he was blessed. There was a holy jealousy. And so he said, let's bring back the ark. Okay, let's bring back the ark. And so they, they brought all the Levites and everybody, entourage, went to this guy's house and wanted to bring it back. But you know what happened? You know what happened? Uzzah, go handle the presents. You cannot handle the presents. You don't use your hands and your flesh to handle the presence. You don't manipulate the presence of God. He is king. When he comes, stand aside. Keep quiet. Look at him. Because we become who we behold. And so David tried, but first time failed. He was so angry. Uzzah was stricken dead. I want you to know that the presence of God is holy. He's not just a friend. He's not just good, good father. He's king. So have some respect when you enter into the presence. Hmm? Have some honor. Have some reverence when you enter into his presence. Okay? Church, okay? I'm not scolding you. Don't, don't, don't frown at me, okay? Smile. All right, very important. Okay, and we are family here. And so David said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Something is wrong. How come like that? Okay, how come this is no good? And First Chronicle 15 became very important for us. You heads of the Levites, families, you and your fellow Levites are to consecrate yourselves. Wait, there's a slide before that. RGB. 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 No slide before that. Cannot be one. Okay, I read verse 11. Hey, no, you are right, you are right, you are right. Okay, you are right. <laughs> okay. You hate. So they are so panicky. All right. Do you know I used in Trinity when I lead worship, I used to make all the RGB people cry? Because I give them a pseudo set of songs, but I never follow. Because I flow with God, but they say, I really sell songs. Okay, I give them five songs, but I, I seldom do them. Okay, anyway. So, First Chronicles, uh, uh, Chronicles 15. Say, and David said to the Levites, Okay, you heads of the Levitical families, you and your fellow Levites are to consecrate yourselves and bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. It was because of you, the Levites, did not bring it up the first time that the Lord our God broke out in anger against us. We, next, this line is very important, we did not inquire of Him about how to do it in the, in the presence of God must be accompanied by the ways of God. You cannot just sing a few songs and expect Him to come. He may come by His grace to refresh you. But when He is enthroned, you get into His way. Follow His way. We must build, this church must build according to prescribed way. 2020 in your life, you want the glory of God and the presence of God, you got to build it, walk in it according to prescribed way. The first time David failed, he used the world's way. But we as people of God, I challenge you, read the word of God and understand the prescribed way. How can we carry his presence? Next slide. And it says, So the priests and the Levites consecrated themselves in order to bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. And the Levites carried the ark of God with the poles on their shoulders. You see, the presence of God cannot be handled. It must be carried. Lord, I have this business. Can you bless it now? Just handling. Lord, I have this plan. I want this promotion. I want this, this, this. Lord, will you bless it? Lord, will you... Will you Give, us me, give me success. Handling. Just handling. But presence is carried. 
you carry His presence. How many of you know you, are, you and I are the New Testament priests? We carry His presence. And it says, and Moses, so Levites carried the ark of God with poles on their shoulders as Moses had commanded in accordance with the word of the Lord. We need to understand God's prescribed ways that are established in His word. If we want to see His glory fill the house here and your own home and your 2020 that every day is marked by His manifest presence in your life, then you and I must have the knowledge of His Word, the prescribed way. Amen? I tell you, it's so powerful. The moment I experienced God and I got married, have children, my family is learning, continues to seek to walk in His ways, to be conscious and aware and jealous to protect His presence in the home. There are so many testimonies, so many miracles. My daughter should be dead by now. She was three, four years old. She was in a room. Uh, we were living in, with my in-laws at that time. The moment we, we have two rooms, one room is four of us, we will share, my son and I, wife, me. We will sleep there. And, then the, and, and, the, and what we do normally is, uh, when we wake up, that room is abandoned because it's just small room beds. The next room is the toy room, the TV room, the books room. And so the kids would be there the moment they wake up. And there was one day, one day, the, uh, my, my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law uh, called me and I was at work and said, Peter, Peter, I saw something crawl into the toy room. Then I asked, where's Mei Mei? She said, uh, let me try and look for her. And she was, my mother-in-law went to look for her and found her in the bedroom. That's unusual. Never happened. And she was just sitting on the bed quietly, doing nothing. How many of you have three, four-year-olds? Have you seen three, four-year-olds do nothing? She was sitting there, doing nothing. It's like something was holding her there. Brought her, and held her there. And I said, okay, close the door, close the door of the toy room. Put whatever towels there. I will call the police and the police, and I will rush home also. So I tell you, the Singapore police is really free. You know what happened? When I reached down there, whoa, three, four police cars, you know. Okay. Then, uh, then when they, they went in, they said, oh, Mr. Loy, wow, lucky your daughter. What's your weapon? This, this, it's a snake. Oh, oh but, but it's more than a snake, it's a cobra, actually. Mm. The Lord protects. So many miracles. When his, presence, when his presence resides in a home as Lord, He takes charge. He takes responsibility over the family. Amen? Let's look at First John right now. Haggai prophesied that there will come a time where the great shaking will happen. And those that will respond to Him will see His glory. And so in 1 John right now, I'm sure there's a slide. Great. <laughs> and the Word became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld His... Everybody say it loud. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is Jesus. The Old Testament were all in preparation. The fire, the glory, the manifest, the loud thunder, they were all preparation uh, and manifestation of God's glory. But when Christ came, He became the full manifestation of presence and glory. And you know, for the longest time uh, in church world, next slide, in church world, we struggle with, uh, with truth and grace. Is that another nice slide? Yeah. One more? Ah, okay. All right. We always struggle with truth and grace. You know where the extremists are? It's not in Middle East. It's right here in church. Hallelujah. Because we always take extreme sides. 
No, we must stand with the truth. No, grace, brother. Let there be love. So we always struggle, but Jesus is fullness of truth and grace. You cannot separate Him. When we understand fullness of truth and fullness of grace, we understand glory. You see, when we have truth without grace, it makes us legalism. It makes us legalistic and dead works, everything we do. But if we have grace without truth, everything is okay, brother. YOLO! <laughs> only millenniums understand what I'm saying. YOLO! You only live once, okay? Do whatever you're happy, do! Heineken on Friday and hallelujah! Raise a hallelujah on Sunday! Apala. We cannot. We need to understand glory. And so what happened in 2 John? Let's look at it. As we bring to a quick close, okay? 2 John 2. <clears throat> On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples, his guest, okay? He's a guest, all right? When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not come, it has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Everybody say that, do whatever he tells you. When a king comes in, no human words, no human voice. When the king sits on the throne, he speaks. His words become law, decree, and commandments. Do whatever he wants. Now, there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, washing each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now became wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who obeyed Jesus, followed his instructions, had drawn from the water new. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when the people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This is the first of his signs Jesus did at Canaan in Galilee and manifested his... Good, you're getting it. Manifested his glory. And his disciples believe him. Now, what happened? It's a wedding feast. Jesus was only a guest. There was a problem. Disruption. Okay? In Middle East and like Asia, hospitality is very important. Weddings at that time is often held in the groom's home. And so in the groom's home, great feast, great banquet, great celebration, problem came. No more wine. Ran out. How many of you know that our world looks like that now? The best ideas, the best thinkers, the best plans, politically, education, whatever, but it's not working out. All are represented by water. Tasteless water. Religion. Everything is tasteless. But down here is a prophetic picture of what Christ and His whole presence and as, his, as king will come to do, he is going to turn the tasteless water of religion and life into a celebration at the end. There's a prophetic picture. But here in this story, it is a problem and proof, and potentially there will be shame, embarrassment, and ridicule. But Jesus, he was only a guest. He's a guest. It was not his party. It was not his place. That's why when Mary came and said, Jesus, they ran out of wine. Jesus, you know, 
คงไม่เสีย But because someone understood the glory, invited him to take charge, and there was there were people that listened and followed his prescribed ways, his words, miracle happened. You see, this house in this wedding. Jesus is not the owner of the house, correct? He's a guest. How many of you in your home have this big plug? Jesus is the unseen guest in this home. That's why you're in trouble. He cannot help you, ma. Number one, he, you cannot see him. Number two, he's only a guest. I prefer your home have the plug. Jesus Christ is Lord of this house. Amen. But he came to a, another story. This house was not his house, but the moment when this house was willing to say, "Jesus, we need you. We welcome you. Take over," something changed there. There was a glory manifested. He manifested his glory. Amen. So this this two zero two zero is the same. You can have your own two zero two zero plans. You can have your two zero two zero aspirations, or you can come to Jesus and say, "Lord, I welcome you into two zero two zero, your presence and your glory, bringing your purpose and agenda. Not my plans, but yours. Not my will, but yours." That's why Jesus prayer. Let Father in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done. Stop thinking of going to heaven, because heaven is coming down. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as it is in heaven. Let it be on earth. Too many Christians are waiting to go heaven. Why? Heaven is waiting to come down. We get things upside down. Two zero two zero, a year of good vision. See things in proper vision. Will somebody say amen? But let me close with this. Then, from you see, the word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. The stories are linked. Uh, back to back for a purpose. The first house at the wedding, the groom's house, Jesus was only a guest. He could. There was a disruption. There was problems. But because somebody let Jesus become to come in, welcome him to take charge, things happen. But next one, next slide. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem in the temple. He found those who were selling oxen, sheep, and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold pigeons. Take these things away. Do not make my father's house. Everybody say my father's house. My father's house a house of trade or a den of robbers. Okay, some versions. His disciples remembered that it was written, "Zeal for your house consume me." You see, the first home, the groom, and the wedding. Jesus guessed, but when. He, somebody, invited Jesus to take over. He became king and lord over that place, and he saved them from shame, miracles, breakthrough. But this is a different house. This house belongs to him. This church belongs to him. Pastor Sabrina and brother, uh, Pastor Andrew, they are God's servants, but it belongs to him. It has to be built according to his prescribed way. Yeah, and so Jesus came in, and because it is his house as the son of the Father, 
He had all authority to bring disruption. There was also a disruption. Solomon's temple, disruption. But good one. David trying to bring the princess, bad disruption. Death. This one, the wedding, disruption, but good because Jesus was allowed to come in and take charge. The house of God, he don't need to ask for permission. This is his house. And the day will come when this house will experience his presence that is not in the measure of just bringing breakthrough, healing, refreshing. This house must yearn. I'm challenging you, church. Yearn for his glory. Will somebody say amen? This world is hungry for something of the supernatural and spiritual, but the church is not providing that. The church is called to be the hope of the world. True Jesus. But Jesus is not in the house. That's why in Revelation, it says, Behold, I knock. He was speaking to the church. Behold, I knock. Why is he knocking? He's outside the doors. Because the many churches have pushed him out with their prescribed way. They take corporate ways and, and put it into their system. They use worldly matters to come in into the house of God and say, no, 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 no. You are turning my father's house. There's meant to be a house of prayer, a house of worship, a house of offering and sacrifice, a house of fellowship into a place of den of robbers. Church, you are starting up. Praise God for your one year, cel- uh, one year anniversary. Starting is, easy, is hard work, but staying on course is even harder. You will be tempted. You will be tempted to take shortcuts to make the church grow. But your pastor won't. I know her for many years. Okay, I, know, I knew her when, when she was younger. <laughs> I read our words, you know. Really? She has been consistent. But she cannot stay on course without you, you know. In that sense, because she needs your encouragement. She needs your support. Hey, how? How about how? In the temple, temple ought to be sacred. So I'm speaking to you, RCA, for a while. Jeremy? Mm-hmm. A temple? We got people cut across like that one. <laughs> yeah. I love the worship team. Yeah. Temple must be sacred. This is a sacred place, a holy ground. Okay? But that temple became a place of common casual marketplace. No longer regarded as holy. Some churches have become like that. In a sacred place, there's a, yeah, yeah, there's fellowship, there's, there's vibrancy, but yet in that fellowship, there's an awe of God. There's a reverence for God. So it's not casual, flippant, human noise. Sometimes church have become so, so partyish. It's like, it's like the thirty first December zook out in Sentosa. Everybody is going crazy. What I'm afraid is many places that I go is becoming like that. What would distinguish RCA? His glory. When His glory is in the house. Do very little except to exalt him and listen to him. Because the communities around and Singapore and Asia will recognize his glory. They are looking for glory. In a temple, there must be the purity of worship of him. He takes center stage. Not Helena, not Natasha. I mean, they are 
wonderful people. I told her she should join Zhongguo's house and Jing. But they are not. They are not the center stage. When people come in, even before they meet the first usher, they should feel the glory. Because what the temple is sacred. His his house. So disruption came to that house. Disruption brought by the king himself of the house. I pray RCA that because you quickly hunger for him and build yourself, your life, and together corporately according to prescribed way, his glory will come, minimize all forms of disruption. And when he comes, he doesn't bring disruption. I pray he will bring his order that he will be enthroned and his rule and reign. He will speak. He will give instructions and you will do according to what he says. I tell you, powerful things happen. How many of you are longing for that? Let me see your hands. Yeah. I just just know, I just sense, yeah, even your pastor this morning said, yeah, the presence of Jesus is right here. But do you just want him here to, oh, he's calling. Hallelujah. (laughs) But do you want just a refreshing presence? Or are you ready to go into a new measure in 2020 of the manifest, the glory of God in your life? Everybody stand. This season, the Lord has been really, really showing me that He is King. I was preaching in Thailand, and it was uh, yeah, it was vibrant worship, you know. And I, I just preached the word, and 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 the Lord said, "No release healing," you know. And so I just we we just those who are sick we came out and and. But I, the, Lord, the Lord didn't ask me. The Lord told me, you will not pray for the people. You activate the people. You activate the people to be God's New Testament priests. And so I got them to pray for each other. And that very moment they started praying, wow, I tell you, there were about 50 people and, and 50 people just got healed. You know. But what I, what I was most amazed but was, this was great at the altar, but I didn't know right at the back, hiding in the dark, was a pre-believer sitting there. Nobody knew she was there. I didn't even see her as I was preaching. And, but she was sitting there, pre-believer, and her whole body was covered with, with extreme eczema, bleeding, you know, eczema, skin disease. And she was sitting there just listening, just watching. But you know what? The presence of God touched her. Nobody prayed for her. Nobody ministered to her because we didn't even know. Everybody, the, all the activity was in the front and, and she was just sitting alone and she shared with us after that that something happened to her when things were happening here. He said she felt a presence that came on her and her whole entire body of eczema was instantly healed and she had baby skin. And I said, wow God, your presence, your presence is powerful with or without me. And so I begin to let the Spirit of God do more and more. The last time I preached in a church, you know, after I preached my heart out, and then I just literally felt the Holy Spirit say, Well done, son. Good job. Now stand aside and watch me. My turn. My turn. It's like a tag team. My turn, son. So I step aside. I've preached, finished already. And I just kept quiet. I just stood down there. I just stood down there. Closed my eyes. The congregation stood just like you. And without any initiation or leading from me, 
people begin to come. People begin to be healed. People begin to cry. People begin to go cross across to another segment and ask for forgiveness and reconcile and tears. You know what? The presence is manifested. I believe RCA is heading that way. Where Jesus is the highlight. He is the center of it all. But right now, His presence and glory wants to come on you. 2020. Are you wanting your plans and resolutions? Or are you ready for presence and revelation? If you are ready for Him, for more of Him, come out quickly right now. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, okay? No time already. Your pastor is staring at me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So if you want, quickly come, quickly come. As a decoration to heaven, say, God, I want your fire to fall on me. I want your presence to fall on me. Lord, I do not want 2020 to be the same old, same old man's plans. God, please bless. But I want your presence, okay? All right, once you come to the altars, you shut in with God. You okay, just say, God, I want your presence. All right, I'm not going to co- coerce you and push you to come forward. You know you need to come, you come. Yeah. And once you come, you shut in with God. You mean business, you be serious. I want you to know that God is not just going to visit a physical temple, a physical place with His glory. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He wants to fill you with His glory. He has called you and I to be the New Testament priest. That means wherever we go, we carry His presence. As priests, we release His Spirit. Oh, let's not play church anymore. Don't come to church anymore. Become the church. His people surrounding and gathered around Him and from His presence, His power and purpose flows through you. God loves you so much. But there's a, there's a measure of His presence that, that your love for Him is not sufficient. It has to be total surrender, total yielding. Just shut in with God right now. Heavenly Father, every single man and woman standing at the altars, Spirit, do something in their hearts right now. Right now. For once again, you will shake all things that will be shaken. And you will fill the temple with your glory. Manifest your presence, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Just open your heart. See yourself. I see altars here. Your life this morning at, the, at this physical place, your life must become an altar. An altar of sacrifice. An altar of self-offering. So that when His fire come, His glory come, what is of Him will remain and what is of you will be consumed. He wants to fill you, church. He don't just want to touch you. He wants to transform you. He wants to, he wants to live in and through you. Church, this is what Christianity is about. It's about Christ in and through us. Oh, it's not about coming on Sundays. Come on. You'll get boring, you know. It's about His presence. It's about His glory. It's about gathering around Him, hearing His power.
powerful, powerful kingly voice. Oh, I see, I see sisters here. Well in years, but yet hungering for God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Heavenly Father, Father, this is a church that you have put together, you have built, you have started. Oh God, I pray that you will not be a normal house, but you will become your favorite house. Lord, because they have learned how to host your presence. They have learned how to build it upon the prescribed way. Lord, they will welcome the disruptions from heaven so that there will be a reordering. Lord, there will be a sifting out of everything that is not of you just as you have come in the temple and cleansed it. Lord, every table, everything that has been set up that is not of you, oh God, this morning, ransack it in Jesus' name. Because God, we are willing to be inconvenienced and uncomfortable just to have more of Jesus in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now stay in the presence. Stay in the presence.